Hey everybody, it's Derek Clamartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I'm convinced that CRUD-driven systems, meaning systems built around create, read, update, delete, in the long run are the hardest to change and evolve. And that may seem unintuitive. We've all read the blog posts or watched videos or courses around building an HP API under the guise of REST, when really what it is is just CRUD-driven development over a database record using uh, HP and JSON. So ultimately what you end up seeing is really this advocacy for trying to map HP methods to, for example, if we're talking relational database with SQL. So a get ends up in a select, a post is an insert, a put and a patch are updates, and a delete is a delete. Then we end up kind of in this bike shedding world of trying to map URIs and how that should be done and kind of the standard way that's mentioned here is okay if you want to get a shipment in my example like delivery of a package then you call get and the uris would be shipment with some identifier ultimately that's just your read that's your select if you need to create a new shipment you're posting to that same uri structure and then same for your pat and push to the uh to ultimately update or partial update and to delete a shipment same type of thing we end up getting this bike shedding about how we're using HP methods, how we're constructing URIs, and how we're returning status codes. So how can this be bad? It's advocated for everywhere. Well, before I get to that, I'd like to thank EventStore for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So what's wrong with a CRUD-driven API? Nothing inherently. However, if you're gonna be building a system that's long-lived, that's when it's hard to evolve and change it for a couple reasons. The first is, is because the focus is on the data and data structures. Ultimately, you're just building an API UI on top of that, but that's derived from actual business processes that your users are performing. You're just building out the data structures for them to record, manage that information. But there are business workflows and processes that they're performing. The thing is, those processes aren't captured in your system. They're just completely in your end users' heads. But the data structure behind those processes, that's what you're actually exposing. And what tends to happen in long-lived systems is that processes are going to change. So how the processes in users' heads and as the data structure was developed, that doesn't necessarily fit anymore. Or there's new processes that are trying to be implemented, again, in users' heads using the CRUD-driven system, but these new processes don't really fit the data structure, hence square peg, round hole. And let me know in the comments if you can relate to this. Many times it's happened to me where, okay, we need to implement this, and you're looking at the way the system's built, and ultimately what you try to do is kind of shimmy in what they're trying to do with how something works now. It feels gross, it feels hacky, but your system is so hard to change that you really have no options. You're really trying to kind of fit something in on top of something that's existing when it doesn't really fit to begin with, but you kind of just make it work. Now this may seem unintuitive, but what you've actually done is you've made your system harder to change because what you started with was building your data structure around one business process, even if it's just in your end users' heads, and now you're trying to fit something else on top of it. So what you've done is you've coupled two different unique potentially business processes to the same underlying data structure. That means if you need to change something to that underlying data structure, you're now affecting two different complete different processes. Rather, focus on what your system actually does. What are the capabilities? A business capability defines the organization's capacity to successfully perform a unique business activity. It's the what. What does your system actually do? What would you say you do here? Using my example of a shipment of a package, how does that actually work with CRUD? You post to create a shipment, then what actually happens where we're doing puts or patches to update the shipment? What are we updating about the shipment? That's not how it works at all. Like many business processes, it's a life cycle. There's a beginning and an end. With a shipment, the first thing that happens is it's dispatch. We're telling a driver, somebody in a vehicle, hey, you need to go pick up this particular package. And there's data behind that happening the date time that it happened, which vehicle is en route now. When that vehicle arrives at the place where they're actually picking up the freight, they've arrived at the shipper. There's Again, there's data behind that, like the date time. 
Then when they actually take the package and physically put it on the vehicle, the freight is loaded at that point. Same thing, the date time, the number of packages or pieces, what the total weight was. There's a lot of other data behind that individual event that occurred. I'm not gonna go through the entire life cycle here, but the next thing, a part of that, would be they've departed and now they're en route potentially to another shipper to pick up more freight or maybe a different package. Maybe they're now headed to the delivery. So there's a part of a sequence, but in all of this, there's a life cycle. So how would you do your typical crud with put and patch? You wouldn't because there's a hierarchy to this. There's a process. It's just not updating a shipment and setting different dates. There's actual workflow involved here. Capturing explicitly what that workflow is and everything that occurs during it is what allows your system to evolve. One of the ways is just being able to understand that when certain things occur, maybe you wanna do something else. So my example of when the actual freight was loaded on the vehicle, maybe there's different things that we need to do. Maybe we have we decided to build in a webhook system so that we have other third parties be able to integrate to us so we know we can call them when that specific event occurs, when we've, for example, loaded the freight. Maybe we have to send emails out to our customer who's actually shipping that package or whatever so we actually receive that. You've probably all received these emails when you order something online to receive tracking information or about an event update of what when it was arrived, when it uh, departed a facility. That's how you're building this. Maybe you have some third party integrations where you have to contact third parties in their APIs to notify them when certain events occur. That's how you're doing this, not with CRUD. You need to be explicit about when things are happening in that business process. The email, third-party integration, webhooks, those are completely independent. They're not coupled to each other in any way. If one of them, say for example, the third-party integration is no longer relevant, we don't have that anymore, we just delete it. We delete the code for that. It's completely independent of the others. Say we have some new requirement, we need to do something else when something a part of that business process occurs. We add it, we're not coupled to anything else. What you're coupled to is that action or whatever event is occurring within that business process. This means capturing business processes. What are the capabilities of the system? Let's model that, what those behaviors are, and then the data behind those behaviors. But what happens when you're using CRUD and why it's hard to change is because you're exposing that internal information about what that data is behind those behaviors, behind what you're exposing of what the capabilities of your system. As an example to illustrate this, let's say we have billing and shipping. If billing were just accessing the schema directly of our shipment and everything, how we're storing that, we would not be able to change shipping, shipping and the shipment at all. How could, how could we possibly evolve it when billing is directly coupled to our internal structures of how we're implementing and storing our data? We don't want any part of this <laughs> at all. That's what makes it hard to change, but you're doing the same thing with CRUD. So rather, we don't wanna have billing access our shipment or shipping directly. We wanna expose some type of API, data on the inside, data on the outside. We wanna expose data on the outside that we can really deem as a contract, how we can verge it differently, how we wanna expose that information related to a shipment. So that's what we want to interact with is some type of API. Another way to illustrate this or think about this is that your data model, how you persist, and your domain model, what that workflow is, aren't the same thing. They're not the same thing. And you wanna capture all of that together and surround that with an API fortress. You wanna define what you wanna to expose to the public so that you can evolve internally what those processes are. So how does explicitly capturing these behaviors in the workflow let you evolve? Because you can. You just change what you need to change. In my shipping example, say a shipment, there was something, a part of that process where we wanted to add something new. Say we could have a stop at a particular location that wasn't related to freight. Say it was stopping at a border. Well, we can just add that part of the process. We can change our process because it's just that unique shipment process. Say we had some new process that we need to implement that's still very similar to a shipment, how a shipment works, but it's a different type of shipment that maybe has different workflow. Create that independently. We don't have to fit that inside of our existing model that we have. You don't need one model to rule them all. If you're modeling business processes, then the data within that, you can evolve each one independently. And that's the issue with CRUD-based systems that are long-lived, and that's why they're hard to evolve and change. Because what you've done is you've built data structures 
on a specific process that really isn't defined anywhere in your system. It's in your users' heads. And if you build stuff on top of that to try to fit other business processes, when you do need to evolve it for what it was originally intended for, are you breaking existing processes that really aren't even defined in your system? Likely yes. But to be clear, are CRUD-based systems bad? Absolutely not. It depends on their context and what you're using it for. A lot of systems have what I'll call supporting data, referential data, where you really don't have business processes built on top of them. They're really there supporting the business processes. Are those suitable for CRUD? Absolutely. CRUD isn't inherently bad. What is bad is using CRUD systems when you actually have a lot of workflows that are really built on top of them. And my favorite part, let me know in the comments where CRUD's gone wrong for you, how the system worked, what was wrong with it, and why do you think that CRUD's so predominant in software development? And as always, if you enjoy topics like this and you wanna chat with other software developers, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.